Hello and welcome to another episode of My Favourite Game from the Honest Football Podcast. This week we're delighted to be joined by Julia Simic, the current West Ham ladies international footballer. She's a German international. She's also played for most notably the likes of Bayern Munich and Wolfsburg over in her native Germany. She's played in Champions League final. She's also won the Bundesliga and German Cup and featured in an FA Cup final over here. We talked to her about a wide range of subjects within football, particularly recovering from injuries, playing in boys football as a child growing up, and also generally the life of a professional footballer and a decision to come and move over and play in England eventually. So I hope you enjoy the episode. Episode. It's a fascinating insight. She really was fantastic to interview, and we thank Julia again for giving us her time. And we hope you enjoy the episode. And don't forget, if you'd like to be part of this favourite game series, just give us a message at Honest Football Three. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by Julia now, and I'll start as I always do, just by asking about your first footballing memories growing up, whether it be as a fan or a player. What's the first moment of football you remember? <laughs> um, the first moment, so I, I remember my first World Cup. I really um, watched that was the World Cup 1998 in France. Yeah. France won. Um, so that was my really first time that I really watched football as a as someone who's really interested, not just because the TV was on and football was <laughs> on it, but um, no, that, that was when I was really into it already. Um, but my first steps with football were maybe with, I don't know, six or seven years when I played with my older brother in the park and we just kicked the ball around with the family and everything. And yeah, that was maybe yeah, my, my, mo- or my first personal steps into football, yes. Okay, and I, I guess straight away, did you fall in love with it immediately and then start playing competitively, or did it take a little bit longer? No, immediately. So it was <laughs> um, obviously at this time, even more than now, um, something special for a girl to play football. Yeah. Like even more than it is now. But um, no, I remember, remember that my whole family was always into football. And as soon as I kicked the ball, it doesn't matter where I went, I always had a ball with me, like really into the, you know, the swimming pool. At school, like everywhere, we were always with balls and kicked balls and played football the, the whole day long, really. And yeah, I, I started really early in a team as well. So when I was seven, I was in the first yeah club I played in. Okay. So yeah. that was at the boys team. But still, like that was already for me, it was always competitive because I always wanted to win. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me a little bit about that, because we've had a few female footballers on and they've all talked in the same way growing up in a certain era that they've had mm-hmm. to play in boys teams. Mm-hmm. So talk to me a bit about that. Did anything about that daunt you or did you just enjoy it the same way and not really notice the difference? Um, it was more from outside. Like everyone, like people around me always said, oh, wow, you play really well for a, for a girl. And whereas I didn't really give it too much, um, I don't know, notice or something. I just played really, you know, and enjoyed it and everything. But obviously the, the older I became or got, the, the more special it was that I was still playing with, with boys. Yeah. Whereas when they played and they played good, it was just normal. And when, when I played and also maybe not bad, it was something really special. <laughs> so so that was more from outside that people made it special. For me, it was always just playing football. And I never really thought about being a girl and playing football because I think when you're five, six, seven years old, you you don't really think of, about what you do. You just do what you yeah, like or right. love. Exactly. Or what you enjoy. So I just did it really. And Obviously, there was a little bit of talent there as well. So, yeah, yeah then, then it was a little bit special for, for others more than for me, to be honest. Uh, that's great to hear. That's, that's, hope, that's the answer I was kind of hoping to hear rather than any, any sort of stigma around it. Yeah, no, um, no. <laughs> And then I guess growing up, talk to me a little bit about watching football, the clubs you supported and why. Was it a local team or a team that you just enjoyed watching for a particular <laughs> reason? So, obviously, I grew up in, in Germany, in Nuremberg. They have yeah. a, at the moment, they are second division and my family members, like my dad is a Nuremberg fan since always and my brother as well. So we went to a lot of games in the stadium and everything. But Nuremberg is, is a little bit like West Ham at the moment. It's a little <laughs> bit of a roller coaster. It goes up and down always. So I have so many good, bad memories of Nuremberg. But we were never these kind of fans that we only supported a club that's always winning, you know. People in our area as well supporting Bayern Munich, for example, because they're just <laughs> great and win the league almost every year. 
Yeah. But when I got a little bit older, like um, 16, I played for Bayern and this is when I became a Bayern fan as well, or a supporter, I would say. Yeah. But deep inside, it's, it's Nuremberg, but more due to my family than... I don't really know why I'm supporting them. It's just in the family, a family thing a little bit. <laughs> and I guess that with Nuremberg, do you remember the first time you were taken to a game live? Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember this. I think <laughs> it was against Dortmund or something and we had a really big flag. And at this time I always liked Dortmund as well. So we went into the stadium with two big flags. Like we had a really good uh, big uh, Nuremberg flag and I got my Dortmund flag. <laughs> but they wouldn't um, be aggressive towards me, the Nuremberg fans. So I was maybe... I don't know, eight or nine years old or something. <laughs> I, I always loved to go into the stadium, the, I don't know, the crowd in front of the stadiums and walking there and the excitement and then it's loud inside. And as a kid, like I always dreamed of playing there, like playing in the men's Bundesliga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't know at this time that it's never going to be happen, but just seeing these crowds and playing football there. And I don't know, once I always um, walked in like as a ball kid with the yeah. team and this is something like you never forget, especially as a kid. Everything is even bigger and better and the memories are always there, you know. I guess that's one of the things I quite wanted to ask you, because obviously we see a lot of German football is very popular on the TV over in the UK as well. And that atmosphere at the ground is very different to English stadiums. Mm -hmm. Talk to me a bit about the, the atmosphere at German grounds, because it seems absolutely crazy to us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was a little bit, how can I say this? Um disappointed by the atmosphere in English stadiums because when we watch the Premier League don't know in at Sky or something yeah at, in front of the TV in Germany then it always seems to be like really loud and the fans are really close to the pitch most of the stadiums are like this but I thought it's a little bit louder to be honest because when you're in Germany when you're in a stadium especially Dortmund and some Bayern as well the stadiums are really loud and fans are singing 90 minutes through the game. Yeah. Not only something special happens or there's a corner or a goal or something, they really sing in songs for 90 minutes in the freezing cold with our shirts on and jumping <laughs> and stuff. And obviously <laughs> we have a little problem with the pyrotechnic as well. Like yeah. The, yeah. But um, no, I think it's, I don't know, it's a little bit less loud here, I would say. But as soon as something happens, of course, the, the fans here are going crazy as well. <laughs> And then I guess moving on a little bit, it would be rude of us not to talk about your career where you've won multiple trophies, played for a number of massive sides. So talk to us about obviously your first growing up and playing for Bayern Munich and then obviously moving on through to the likes of Wolfsburg where you obviously won the Bundesliga title. And then we'll get on to West Ham a bit later, which is obviously a step abroad. So talk to us about your early steps in Germany. So I played football um, with boys until I was 16 and then I got scouted by Bayern Munich. Like there was already the, the first women's team, like a Bundesliga club. So I made the step from basically the under 16 boys to the, like to a professional footballer. Yeah. Because in Germany you can play, with 16 you can play as a professional, you know. So that huh. was that was a big step, obviously. But um, <laughs> no, I, I loved my time at Bayern. It was a great club. Like the, the environment and the atmosphere was really really nice but not at this level as it's now so now it's a little bit more professional even for the women's teams yeah. and better facilities and better infrastructure and everything but back then even back then you could feel like you play for a really big club every everywhere we went with our Bayern clothes on people would recognize the club it doesn't matter sometimes we went to Jordan and like crazy countries and people would recognize <laughs> the club directly so yeah. it was something special and um, I loved this time, so that was also my longest time for a club I played. I think that was eight or nine years. Yeah, obviously I moved on because Bayern at this time wasn't like the best club um, in women's football. Mm -hmm. There was Wolfsburg, for example, who played Champions League every year, who were um, competing for winning the league every year, the cup every year. And yeah, obviously that was the next logical step in my career to go to a better women's team. <laughs> and obviously, yeah, I, I'm really happy and pleased that I won some titles with Wolfsburg. I've played in the Champions League final once and twice in the semi-final. This is a little bit sad that I never could win the Champions League. Yeah. League. But uh, <laughs> anyway, it was, was a great, like really successful time at Wolfsburg and made my caps then for Germany as well when I played for Wolfsburg. So yeah, looking back, it was maybe the most successful time in my, in my career. <laughs> And I guess also talking about Germany, you've led to my next point, really. And you talk about playing for your international side, because I guess that must be a dream for most people growing up. So talk to me about the opportunity to do that. Yeah, obviously, that was always my my biggest dream to just play for the national team and yeah. get caps and play maybe big tournaments and things like this. Especially for Germany, they 
always been a really, really good women's team and yeah. won a lot of titles, a lot of tournaments. And I was a little bit, I would say, unlucky with, with injuries because when I first got called up for Germany, I was 20, 21 at this time and directly ruptured my ACL in the first session. So yeah. I was out and I re-ruptured it immediately after again. So I was, I think, out for almost two and a half years after this. So it took a while until I could finally make my debut or my first cap. That was maybe when I was 26. So um, just having this cap then in your, in your hand and don't know, finally play for Germany was just kind of a relief. So when it would have happened when I was 20 or 21, maybe I would have enjoyed it a little bit more in terms of excitement. Yeah. But when I was 26, I, it was just finally time to play for Germany for me. And I was just happy that day that it finally happened and that I can say, hey, I play for Germany now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the nicest thing to be able to say, I'd yeah. imagine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and then I guess you mentioned injuries as well. And it's something that, unfortunately, all three of us as hosting a podcast, albeit, albeit at a much lower level of experience, talk to us about the the journey of coming back from injury, because we don't really see that side of the professional footballer. And it's something that we're always quite interested to know. Yeah, 100%. And I think no one can really understand if, if he or she wasn't there. What it yeah. means to go, don't know, for one, two years injury when you can't play. And for example, right now, I just came back from an injury 12 months and didn't really know if I can make it back on the pitch. And I don't know, it's just as soon as you step on this field again on this pitch and play again, everything is a little bit forget, forgot, you know, like yeah. then, then, you know, everything was worth it. And you see the outcome of it was, yeah, just excuse for everything you went through you know and but obviously there, there are a lot of ups and downs um more downs uh, because you have a lot of lonely days in the in the area uh, when everyone's going yeah. on the pitch and you less alone a little bit in the gym or on the bike or you do stuff you don't really enjoy like everyone <laughs> yeah. else is happy and play football win games lose games but you're not really a part of it but still you don't want to be excluded too much so it's a little bit finding a balance as well from from this point of view with your teammate so so I don't know it's 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 a tough one really and I think everyone is handling it a little bit different I always enjoyed don't know doing other stuff apart from football because just you know finding something useful to to wake up every morning and do something that you really like and not just going to the gym and do your rehab and going back home again and be sad just yeah. doing a lot of stuff going going away doing internships I studied as well and meeting people and everything like the, keep yourself busy is my, my best advice or was always my um, best thing really to do during during long term injuries yeah I think that's incredible advice obviously I, I think it's the thing that's forgotten the most is the fact that you're you quite often get quite isolated from the rest of the team who are <laughs> obviously in a completely different area to you most days so I think it's really fascinating insight to that um, I guess moving on, you made your first step abroad, obviously, to play in England in the mm -hmm. last year with West Ham. Mm -hmm. um, talk to us about making that decision, how difficult it was for you to leave Germany in terms of playing football and how you found being at West Ham so far. <laughs> so it wasn't so difficult, to be honest, because my dream was always to play, play abroad at one time in my career. And okay. it took me a while, so 28 years. <laughs> but um, <laughs> To be honest, I, my, my plan at this time wasn't really to go to England anymore because I just wanted, I had a lot of injuries this season as well. And don't know, then I was just at the point where I thought, hey, I can use football also for traveling and experience something from, from the world. Yeah. And not just playing on a really high level and competing at, at your limits always. So um, I, I thought more like going somewhere really sunny, warm, don't know, in a really nice country, really nice city or something <laughs> like this. Even if it meant, like, meant that I'm not playing Champions League or at least in a professional league or something. So yeah. I got my convertible car and everything was set up to go, I don't know, Portugal, Spain, Italy, something <laughs> like this. But then I, I, I've, I've got the call from Matt Beer from my coach here at West Ham and went over to see all the facilities here at Rush Green at our training centre and everything. And yeah, that convinced me, obviously, because I don't know when you can play in such a great league the crazy football culture of England as well a little bit and obviously a new culture, a new language and that was the whole package was was just great here here in, in the yeah WSL to play football on a on a high level and as a professional as well. 
That's brilliant. I guess you probably not had the chance to put the roof down on the car too often in England. <laughs> to be honest, that was maybe the hottest summer ever. It was last year. And yeah. when I came, I was so shocked that England or London is so hot. <laughs> Even all the parks are really yellow because it was just the sun was burning yeah. down and there was no rain, I think, for seven, eight weeks. Yeah. So that was a great summer for my convertible car. To <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'll ever get that again, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, Before we move on to the final question, as a professional footballer, we'd just like to ask you in your career, as yours has been pretty illustrious in particular, the best player that you've played with and against in your career, if you wanted to pick out a couple of names. Um, So there were some great players at at Wolfsburg, obviously, like Ramona Bachmann back then. Now she's playing for Chelsea. Um, uh, Penille Harda was was a really, really good player. Nilla Fischer, she's a centre-back or been a centre-back at Wolfsburg. Yeah. She was really great. Um, um, let me think. I obviously, I played against Alex Morgan and players like this, Wendy Renard from France, Eugenie Le Sommer, yeah. there, Jennifer Maroshan, obviously, she's a great player as well. Um, yeah, I would say these are my, my favourites I've played against. <laughs> Not some bad names to be able to reel off there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. And then obviously the main reason we have this podcast and the big question we always ask at the end, and you're going to have probably a lot of experiences as a professional player, is we always like to ask guests what their favourite game is. Now, I'm happy to give you two as you're both a fan and a player of football, <laughs> but what are your favourite games you've been involved in and as a supporter and why? Um, So my favourite game is a... As a player, I would say it was when we played the semi-final with Turbine Potsdam in the Champions League. We okay. played against Wolfsburg. That was when I, before I went to Wolfsburg. Yeah. And we lost this game. But I think that was one of the best games I've ever played and scored as well. And there was everything in this game. Like, really everything. We played in front of, I don't know, almost 20,000 people or something. Yeah. I got booed out because <laughs> uh, I was, I'm, I'm really not a rude player or something. Just the opposite. But... Uh, I was so under like fire and everything because the time was running against us. I think it was three, four, three at this time for Wolfsburg, and we needed one more goal to make it to the final. And yeah, we had everything under control, like dominated the game and stuff. And then a player from from Wolfsburg played a little bit with the time and wasted time in terms of <laughs> don't know simulating a little bit, and I uh, tried to held her up I would say <laughs> and then yeah the whole stadium was against me but that ma- made me play even better so I never had this experience that someone booed at me or something you know yeah but that was I don't know from from emotion and the atmosphere and everything that was maybe the best game I've ever played yeah in the in the um, game as a supporter maybe the 7-1 from Germany against Brazil yeah. at the World Cup 2014 <laughs> I know it's, it's at one point, we were already sitting there and thinking, is this real? Like, are we dreaming or something? Because it was just so, don't know, everything was good for Germany. And everything, the worst thing for Brazil maybe ever that could have happened, happened. Yeah. So, nah, that was a crazy game. We, we watched this, like, having a barbecue with a lot of friends. And the atmosphere obviously was great, especially after the game. And, yeah. That's brilliant. I mean, I guess it's one of the things I'd like to ask based on that game. I'm really glad you picked a German international one. It's yeah. In England, in my lifetime, we've not really had the chance to get excited in a major okay. tournament. Um, so sorry for you. I just, <laughs> I just wanted to ask what the feeling was like being in a country when you're on a run to the World Cup final and obviously eventually winning it as Germany did. What's that sort of feeling like? Do you feel it in the country as it's happening? Yeah, 100%. Um, I think... Germany is also like a football crazy country, you know, and I think these, since 2006, when we had our, our World Cup at home, yeah. um, people are always going crazy when there's a World Cup again, like pu- public viewing and everyone is outside and doing barbecues and in the streets. <laughs> and then all after the game, obviously, we, we went out as well. Or after the final as well, we went out. There was a crazy final against Ar- Argentina and just celebrating with random people on the streets was unreal, like really, really crazy. And uh, yeah, really, really great atmosphere in Germany then. <laughs> uh, it's, it's amazing to hear. It's a fantastic game you picked, obviously, being involved in the last stages of Champions League. And then obviously, as a fan, supporting your country is obviously the most important part and can yeah. bring the greatest joy when it's going well. Um, we thank you again for joining us. We really do appreciate you giving up your time. You've given a thank fascinating you. insight into football, particularly at the professional level. And we hope that many pl- people that listen to this will come and check you out at West Ham United. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you.
That's it for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Thanks again to Julia. What a wonderful guest she was. A fantastic insight into football. But if you did enjoy it, please put a thumbs up on the video if you're watching on YouTube. Give us a follow on Spotify. Subscribe to the channel on YouTube as well. And you can follow us on Twitter at HonestFootball3. And we'll see you next time. Hey.